What's up family? My name is Dr. Nkeng Stevens aka Mr. We Take Another Shot. So today I'm here to talk about some tools in DaVinci Resolve. The primary color wheels and the lock color wheels. I'm here to show you how to use them and when to use them. So follow me, let's go. So let's say we have our shot already set up and transformed. We already did the CST in and CST out. We also put in the normal DaVinci Resolve Kodak 2383 film lot. And this is what we're getting. We did our exposure and then also did some contrast to the image. So, I mean, you guys already know how I do this. If you don't know how I do all this process, I have a tutorial on my page. You can go and look through it. I'll put a link on the description box below so you can go and look through it and understand before coming to these tutorials so we have the primary color wheels and the log wheels these two look alike but they are completely different so you see the primary color wheels it looks like the log color wheels but they have two different purposes so the primary color wheels is like imagine you have a wall and you want to paint you want to paint the wall and imagine you have two brushes one big brush and one small brush the big brush you want to use the big brush to paint like the whole wall and then the small brush is that brush where you use to paint just the edges of the wall so the log wheel is like the small brush which you use to like paint the edges of the wall why the primary wheels is like the the large or the big brush which you use to paint like the whole wall yeah so basically this is how the primary wheels and the log wheels actually work so just imagine now we want to create a look for this video so we're going to come to the primary wheels and then we're going to start working on the offset because the offset affects like everything it affects the gain gamma and the lift so it means it affects all the colors in the image so we're going to come to the offset under the primary color wheels let's say we're going for a cool look so we say we'll take away some yellow and red colors from this image so let's try that so on the offset we take it down and i feel like this is some good spot so let's say we are happy right over here you can see the before and after before after you can see how it takes away the yellow and red colors from the image but then it brings in um, some cool blue cyan colors which is really good but then we have a problem here we have a lot of blue in the shadows and when you're doing color grading your shadows are always supposed to be pure black like no colors should be in the shadows naturally that's how life is so if you want your image to really look natural you have to ensure that no colors are in the shadows so we have to try to remove the colors from the shadows to get a really good look because if we do, if we just leave it like this, we're going to face a lot of problems when your videos are playing on TVs or on different devices, it's going to really look muddy. So you have to solve this problem. We have to fix the shadows. So how do we fix the shadows? Well, I mean, you, we can come over to the lift and then try to give the opposite of blue. You know, we try to put the opposite of blue, but you see that it really takes away the look because like I told you, the primary color wheels is the large brush, which you use to color, you know, large things. But now we're working on the shadows, which is a very precise point of the image. So you have to use the log wheel, which is like the small brush used to you know uh, redefine the edges of your color or whatever so um, we come over to the log wheels and this is where the log wheels are we're going to the shadows and then we're going to now take away blue from the shadows so the opposite of blue is going to be like yellow and red colors so we take away blue from the shadows and let's see how it goes um, so it's good. we're going to get the yellow reddish colors so if you see if you see the before and after this is before and then this is after before after you can see what it's doing on this see this is before you see how everything was just blue and the shadows were really blue which is not really cool but you see after it's kind of you know balanced you know stuff like that so you can 
still play with the range we can still play with the range we can say hey i want the red and the shadows to affect more space in the image because we are affecting just the darkest part of the image so if we want to add you know the parts that the reds are going to affect we can add it here so you see what we are doing so it's taking away that feeling the color which we want so we have to ensure that we work on the range to get like where is a sweet spot where we feel like um the shadows are really pure black and we're not getting blues in the shadows and then we're still maintaining our look which is the most important thing so this is where your eyes have to really come in place yeah so looking at this image i think here is not a bad point because if i see before and after before after before after i can really tell from this spot here you can see see how the colors changes to natural black and i think i like it like this so i mean if i was just going for a very fast color grading process this is this would be done for me i could export this and send to the client and i'm very sure the clients are going to like it but for tutorial sake i would like us to just do a little bit more so you get the idea on what makes color grading special okay so after looking at this image i think we need to reduce the saturation of certain colors to really keep that naturality in the image so i'm going to create a new note and then i'm going to just let's call this saturation and then i'm going to now bring down the saturation of the blue because i think the blue is a little too too saturated for my liking it could be good for you but i think i can just take it down a little so i'm under the hsl panel and i'm using the saturation uv saturation curve so i'm taking down the blue just a little see what i'm doing if i take it too much so i'm trying to be in a spot where it's not too much and it's not too absent you get but it feels good so I think here yeah, is a good spot for me so you can see before you see it's really blue and uh, the sky is really thick blue but I feel like it gives some mood when the saturation was brought down a little so I'm going to go over to the warmer tones like the skin and this red scarf that the girl is wearing and take it down a little so just come over to this warm tones and then take down the saturation a little having the red tones just a little so we maintain that cinematic film it look which is crisp so you see before and you see after you see what it's doing this is before you see how thick this color was and now you see how natural looks these are the little things that will make your color grading unique and feels natural now we we feel like the color grading is good the image looks good but we want to add some more blue into the image in a very tactical way that will create some more star you know just like this high light we want to add some cyan or some greenish tones just to create some color depth and all that so uh, we're not going to come over to pre to the primary wheels and then go to the gain and start you know adding colors because if you do that you're going to really have like messed up colors because it's, it's now working on all of the image remember the primary tools is the large brush so if you do this you're going to it's like you're throwing blue on on everything on all the colors so we don't need that we need to focus just on the highlights which is where the log wheels come again so uh, under the log wheels we're going to come to the highlight and then we add some colors there like some greenish greenish bluish color and then we're going to work on the range so we can see what we are doing so let me just take it down first so we see what we are affecting so you can see right over here you see this is before so i'm just bringing down the highlights to something like this so 
taking it towards the yellowish side you see what is given and i think that this is something which is nice because you see before and after i think it's nice but it's it looks too overdone for me so i'm going to reduce the range reduce where it's going to affect so i want it to affect just the high the high points of the image so see this i'll take the range up a little so somewhere around yeah like i said you this is where your eyes have to really come in because for you to know where to stop it's it's very technical it's more of perspective so you have to have a good perspective of how you want your colors to look so this is where i'll leave it and if you see the before and then this is after you see what it does before you see the highlights were still very natural and you no know, normal but i'm just adding some taste you see this and now it looks a little bit more filmic for me so i think i will go with this so this is this is great i mean this is just a tutorial to help you understand how to use these tools these tools are very important and once you know how to use them and when to use them you now start becoming a creator on your own and you can actually create uh, colors that will really amaze people so thank you once again i know you understood what i was trying to pass out for those who like the video you can like and subscribe for those who don't you still like and subscribe because we're sharing knowledge to the world and to africa so once again my name is dr king steven tka mr would take another shot and see you next time